Things can get rough out there. The bumper to the back of the 24. You think you got the brass? I proved it last season. That was last year. Now we've got young blood ready to take out the old. Start your engines. It's time to race. Entering the year 2018, NASCAR was at a crossroads. A lot of their established superstars had now left the sport in Dale Earnhardt Jr., Jeff Gordon, Carl Edwards, and Tony Stewart. In order to fill that void, NASCAR needed to market its young superstars ASAP. Dealing with the retirement of several popular veterans, NASCAR has officially shifted its brand campaign to give young drivers a turn in the media spotlight. The loss of these vibrant personalities the sport had for 20 plus years are now gone, and Steve Phelps knows that they have to kick their marketing campaign into a another gear it's not a list per se of hey these are guys we're going to promote and this is a list of guys that we are not going to promote the drivers really start with our veteran drivers hall of fame drivers like jimmy johnson and kevin harvick and kyle bush all these guys are such an important part of everything that we do but we also need to boast these young drivers. Our fans understand who they are. They're authentic, want to win on the racetrack, and they're just fantastic drivers. It's a mix of veterans and young guys. It's not young guys at the exclusion of the veterans or the veterans at the exclusion of the young guys. NASCAR might have had a plethora of young, talented drivers in Ryan Blaney, William Byron, Chase Elliott, Kyle Larson, Daniel Suarez, Bubba Wallace, Eric Jones, and Ricky Stenhouse Jr. The problem is the marketing narrative was this whole young drivers waiting to take out the old type deal, when in reality, all nine of these drivers had a combined nine wins entering 2018. Kyle Busch later got involved, stating that he was not a fan of NASCAR's marketing campaigns promoting the younger drivers. After those comments were made public, a few of the younger drivers chimed in as well, but the loudest was Ryan Blaney. Yeah, I'm comfortable with it. I know a couple other people aren't aren't comfortable or, or excited to see NASCAR pushing these drivers, I heard yesterday, but um, if those certain people would be willing to do more things, NASCAR would use them. You know, I, I've always been willing to do some stuff uh, for NASCAR, and, and they've been great to me. And that, that comes hand in hand. You know, you have to be willing to do things for NASCAR to ask you. And uh, uh, I've always been been up to do that. Only one major problem. Well, as a matter of fact, three. In the first 10 races of 2018, the big three would emerge. Martin Truex Jr., Kyle Busch, and Kevin Harvick all combined to win seven of the first 10 races of 2018. Kyle Busch and Kevin Harvick both won three races apiece, while Martin Truex Jr. started off the season slowly, if we want to call that, only winning one. The whole young drivers waiting to take out the old narrative was quickly dead as the first six races saw an average age of 38 8.5 in terms of the cup winners. Outside of the big three winning, the young drivers still weren't getting it done. Clint Boyer and Joey Logano already had their wins in the bag, and the only young driver to win up to this point was Austin Dillon in the 2018 Daytona 500. Once we got to April, the whole young drivers versus old drivers narrative was noticed by fans as a failure. So let's take a look at that for a second. Look at these veteran drivers that I talked about, the drivers that were have been superstars for the last 20, 25 years. Look at how they did in their first three years. Look at all those wins, and a couple of them on their one champion championships in their fourth season and all that versus these young drivers a couple wins here and there I know Larson had four wins but that was in his fourth year and he doesn't look to be that good this year so he's taking a step backwards it's just night and day looking at these two so the problem NASCAR has in 2018 is fans are being forced to root for these new replacement drivers and they're just not getting the job done. We're 10 races into the season. Kyle Busch has three wins. Kevin Harvick has three wins. Clint Boyer hadn't won a race in like five years. And now he's got a win because he's got no competition. Fans are being forced to root for these young drivers. And because a lot of them are struggling and really not even close to what their predecessors were, a lot of fans are abandoning them. And as a result, some number of those fans are abandoning the sport as a whole. And it's just inevitable. NASCAR always airs those commercials on Sunday, the black and white ones with like, the young blood ready to take out the old. That's false advertising, NASCAR. Because when I tune in on Sunday, I see veterans Kevin Harvick and Martin Truex Jr. and Kyle Busch leading. And I see these young drivers struggling to stay on the lead lap most of the time. Of those young drivers who really had a tough time staying on the lead lap all season, they consisted of Ricky Stenhouse Jr., William Byron, 
Cameron, and the two most popular in Daniel Suarez and Bubba Wallace. For a multitude of reasons, these guys just couldn't get the job done and really couldn't get out of the hole they were in the beginning of the season. Ultimately, Suarez was the lowest JGR car in the field, and Bubba Wallace and RPM were just simply trying to survive and get sponsorship at this point. With those guys considered non-factors at this point, where's the rest of the next-gen drivers? As it turns out, a few of them were able to pick up the performance by the time we got to summer. Kyle Larson was the most notable, his 2018 battle with Kyle Busch at Chicagoland will live on in NASCAR history forever. By the time we reach the halfway point, the big three of Kevin Harvick, Kyle Busch, and Martin Truex Jr. have won 12 of the first 18 races. But there was also a glimmer of hope too. The halfway point marked our second young driver winner in Eric Jones as he scored his first career Cup Series victory at Daytona. The final winner from the regular season was NASCAR's new prodigal son and Chase Elliott. On August 5th, 2018, he scored his first career win at Watkins Glen. But it was short-lived, as former NASCAR CEO Brian Franz got pulled over for a DUI, and that would dominate the headlines the next day instead. Three young drivers won a total of three races during the regular season, while six made the playoffs entirely. Eric Jones won a race in Daytona, but for the most part, his performance in the 20 for JGR was pretty mediocre. While he was the only JGR car to get knocked out of the playoffs in the first round, Austin Dillon and the three RCR team were just lucky to be there. Outside of his 500 win, Austin scored only one top five and seven top tens the rest of the season. Alex Bowman started off the season in the best way possible winning that season's Daytona 500 pole and even advanced to a round in the playoffs, not bad but ultimately he was eliminated after round 12. Ryan Blaney was consistent for most of that season, but just didn't get a win until the inaugural Roval. He stepped it up for the first round of the playoffs, but was eliminated in the end at Kansas. Kyle Larson was probably the biggest disappointment out of all of these guys. He'd followed up his four win season going winless in 2018. Although he had some speed scoring a trio of poles, for the most part, he was very inconsistent. After bumping Jimmy Johnson out of the playoffs entirely, Larson was immediately bumped in the round of 12. The only young driver to make any sort of substantial noise was Chase Elliott. After their first win, the team and him kicked it up a notch. They quickly became Hendrick Motorsports' best team, scoring two wins in the playoffs at Dover and Kansas. Chase won the most popular driver award in the Cup Series for the first time in his career and was eliminated at the round of eight. The whole young drivers taking out the old drivers campaign might have been terrible that season, but NASCAR wasn't totally off the mark. They knew that these drivers would eventually become the stars of their sport, and fast forwarding four years later, it seems at the moment that every single driver from that campaign is either at best in a very terrific situation or at worst, in a situation where you could eventually build back up to a bigger team. But at the moment, everyone seems to be making the most of their opportunities, whether it's with a mega buck team or an underdog. So looking back, NASCAR knew exactly what they were doing in 2018. The problem was they jumped the gun four years too early. Imagine that same marketing campaign being ran in the 2021 season. With the parody we've had, it would have been Perfect. In the end, NASCAR got its wish, its younger drivers are starting to take over, and it's amazing to see. And once again, that'll do it for another video. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Black Flags Matter. Catch you next time.